Hello again, Vinyl Community. I am in Ann Arbor, Michigan, and I am heading to Encore Recordings. Um, I'm visiting my in-laws, so um, I've been to Encore before. It's a great record store. Uh, I'm actually meeting, for the first time, a couple members of the VC here. Uh, Joe, whose uh, channel name is Vinyl Joe and uh, Brian, who sort of has the, his YouTube channel is good, it looks like Goodwill, but it's good W-I and then two ones. So yeah, we're, uh, we're all gonna meet up there. We've never met each other before. We've spoken to each other online. Brian, I've known Brian really for a In long time. Feet, take a right at South Fifth Avenue. So yeah, so I've you know I've known Brian for quite a while. Uh, he was actually uh, one of the winners of a very early subscribers contest that I had, and, um, and then of course he you know sent me something in return. I, he didn't have to do that, but he sort of sent me something in thanks for uh, the prize that he got from me. So, but we've been in, we've been in contact with each other for a long time, and I you know, mentioned to him that I uh, had relatives in Ann Arbor. So let me know that you know next time I'm around that we should hook up. I thought that was a good idea. And uh, same thing with Joe, really. Although I've just started communicating with Joe more recently. But yeah, we're gonna we're gonna hook up at Encore Recordings, and uh, I'm taking you with me. Or, in the magic of video editing, in just a few seconds. I was wondering when you were going to pull that out. I get to see the creative process. <laughs> All the raw stuff. One of the things you may have caught there in that last picture of the three of us was that we were all holding up Encore record bags. These were, they, the store was, store was selling them, but with the purchase of dollars, you get one of these for free. And it's a very high quality bag, very high quality, almost a canvas type bag. It's probably cotton, but uh, real real sturdy material. It's got the Encore logo on there and everything. And it holds, uh, I think I, I sort of stuffed it. <laughs> so uh, I would 
say this holds 20 to 25 records? Well, anyway, uh, we spent at least three hours in that store. And uh, it was, I mean, we probably could have kept going. But at one point or another, we all sort of converged in one area of the store and admitted to each other that we were starving. Um, so uh, Brian suggested a place called the Jolly Pumpkin, which uh, he knew about from from having been in Ann Arbor before. So we uh, we made our way to the Jolly Pumpkin, got ourselves a table, and uh, it seemed to be that we were forgotten about for a little while. <laughs> but uh, at some point, either Brian or Joe, I can't remember which one, flagged down a waitress that was walking by and said that we had no waitress. and. Uh, she went away, and then she came back, and she was our waitress. Uh, it turned out to be really cool because she was she was super knowledgeable about beer. Uh, more knowledge she had more knowledge of beer than the three of us combined, I think. <laughs> so uh, we we put our trust in her hands and, and uh, ordered a few things, and then uh, and then basically we just kind of showed each other our finds um, until the food got there. So, uh, got a few shots that we took, uh, it certainly isn't all the finds, but uh, a few shots that we took of, of us sort of being total record geeks in the restaurant and showing off our records. So while I did show a few choice records that each of us found at the store, I, uh, I have the liberty, because I'm now at home and uh, editing this video, I have the liberty of being able to show you the rest of my finds. I will say that uh, all three of us feel like we did really well uh, that day. Um, all three of us really found some, some cool stuff, which is actually it's not surprising because it was Encore Records. So. Uh, if you've ever been in Encore Records, uh, you know that it's a it's a great place to, to do some digging. You get a lot of records, as you saw in the video. Anyway, one of the things I found, I was looking in a New Rivals bin, and one of the things I found was this audio-visual magazine, uh, abstract magazines, audio-visual. Uh, this is uh, issue number six, and it's got kind of a cool, uh, sort of a laminated... Uh, embossed, not laminated, but embossed plastic sleeve cover there and uh, comes with a magazine, 36 page magazine, various different bands that are featured on this thing, both articles and photography, and then the disc itself, which, oops, sorry, <laughs> and then the disc itself, which uh, features bands like uh, In the Nursery and uh, Zymox and the anti-group and a certain ratio, that sort of thing. So this is all put out by uh, Sweatbox Records. Um, that is issue number six of that. Uh, apparently I've come to find out since then that issue number five and issue number six had records, but none of the other ones did. So now i got to find issue five. <laughs> very near the bins, very near the drawers where they had the reggae records, they had uh, you know, like Afro Beat and various different things like that. So I picked up a King Sunny A Day record that I did not have. Uh, this is called Aura. Um, I think I, I currently I think I have the one before this and the one right after this. And uh, people look at those three records as kind of an Afrobeat trilogy from King Sunny A Day. Uh, but I was very happy to find that. Uh, I actually found two copies and Brian picked up one of them. Uh, in the same bin, 
Miriam Makiba, African singer. This I, I have a couple other earlier Miriam Makiba records. This is 1988. This was released in 1988. I have a couple earlier of her records, but um, this was actually the record that I sort of discovered her with. <laughs> but uh, anyway, it just, just blew me away when I heard her singing, and uh, I had to get I had to get this. I actually got it at the time. I got it on CD. And since then, I've found a couple other Miriam Makiba record albums, and I uh, was just very thrilled to find that one. I picked up a copy of UB40's first record in the uh, in the reggae bin, and uh, it's original original inner sleeves with that. Uh, there's two two records in here. There's a, a full length record that was their their debut release, and then a uh, sort of a 12-inch single or EP kind of thing that was thrown in there with that. I actually already have a copy of this, but the copy that I have was not in as good a shape and did not have those original sleeves, those inner sleeves. One that I was very thrilled about and actually turned out to be the most expensive purchase there, um, Steve Jansen and Richard Barbieri, uh, both members of Japan at one point, and uh, this is obviously this is them, you know, on their own doing kind of a pop ambient thing, if you want to call it that. I don't know, uh, but Japanese pressing, obviously. So it's just really thrilled to to find that one. I did not have Kraftwerk's Computer World on vinyl, and I was just thrilled to find this. This is a darn near pristine copy of Computer World on vinyl. 12-inch single for Cuts You Up from Peter Murphy. It's a four-song 12-inch single. So I really love Peter Murphy, formerly a Bauhaus. I really like the, the album that that came from called Deep, and that song in particular was the hit. I'm really thrilled to find the 12-inch single for that. Uh, the Go-Betweens. Don't have much Go-Betweens on vinyl. So I was really happy to find this. This is Tallulah. So I was pretty excited about that. And then also, another sort of nifty find was a John Martin record that I did not have. I don't know why I'm holding everything over here. I suppose I could hold it over here as well. Just mix things up a bit. But uh, Well Kept Secret, John Martin. This was uh, 1982. So. A uh, double record set from a band called Him. This is not the Norwegian uh, gothy metal band Him, His Infernal Majesty. This is um, Doug Sharon, who's a drummer, percussionist, and uh, basically this is sort of a post-rock kind of thing. I, I really like everything that the guy has done and all the projects that he's been involved in. It's, it's basically the him projects and projects like Out of Worship and some other things are all sort of centered around Doug Sheeran. Uh, this has uh, Fred Erskine, uh, Adam Pierce, who, if I remember correctly, Adam Pierce is the one who uh, is behind Mouse Parade. Um, but a two record set on Fat Cat Records from him called New Features. What Eolovox record shopping trip would be complete without a little Kate Bush. <laughs> um, I couldn't remember at the time whether or not I had this single for the Big Sky. Um, I think I've told the story before that at one point I had just a boatload of Kate Bush singles in the 80s and uh, started unloading them when uh, CDs came on the scene. So I've been sort of recollecting Kate Bush CDs and this is one of them. I, uh, it's uh, the Big Sky with the meteorological mix. Meteorological mix of the Big Sky, probably my favorite remix of any artist, any band. And that basically was all of my finds from the time that we went, uh, that I went and met Brian and Joe there at Encore. Um, but I ended up going back. <laughs> um, I was staying in Ann Arbor, and so I was relatively close to, to uh, Encore, and there were some uh, 
there were some records that were sort of eating away at me, some records that I had left behind. Just felt like I couldn't afford them at the time or, you know, had to, had to call somewhere. And there was one in particular that was sort of eating at me. And uh, so a couple days later, my wife had some reason that they, she and my daughter wanted to go downtown for a shop. And I said, well, let me, let me run back over to Encore because it was something I wanted to get. So this was really the main thing. This is a special edition of uh, Break Up the Concrete from the Pretenders. Um, you can sort of see it's, you know, cut like it's concrete. And there are two 10-inch singles in here, two 10-inch vinyl discs that make up the album, and then also the CD. And this, this even though it's sealed right now, this is a band of some sort that probably is removable. I'm hoping it's removable because I think that's the way to get into the record over there. But uh, I just thought this was really cool. Uh, I have this on CD, and I really like it. Uh, I'm a big Pretenders fan anyway, so... Something else that I found that I... It was not quite as important as that Pretenders album, but I still wanted to go back for it, was uh, a copy of Ultravox Lament. Um, this, I think this was the second-to-last album with Midjure. Uh, and I actually already own this album, but my copy is not in this nicest shape. So I had to, I had to get that. It's not the the special limited edition European copy with the textured uh, uh, cover, the textured sleeve, and all that. But this is just a mint, mint copy of this record, and I knew mine wasn't in that good a shape. It's not beat, but it just wasn't in that minty a shape. Uh, something else I did while I was there, though, the second time, is I, I happened to spend a little bit more time over in the electronic bins. Prize find, I think, over in the electronic section. Uh, there is a band that, uh, I believe they're from Michigan, uh, called Kiln, or Kill. I guess the way you're supposed to say that, but it's like a pottery kill. Uh, the N is supposedly silent. So I don't know if the band takes it the same way or not. But this is uh, Twine Wheel, which is a collection. The way they describe it is Lost Sides and Dusty Gems from 1994 to 2005. Um, I, I absolutely adore what this band does. Uh, it's electronic music, but it feels organic. It's very textured, very very layered. There's, there, there, there is an organic feel to it, even though it's electronic. And um, it's a little sort of almost like an OBI strip. Uh, but anyway, I really love this band, and I, I don't have anything. I have a ton of their stuff on CD, but I don't have anything on vinyl. So that was definitely something I was really, really thrilled to find over in the electronic section. Well, that sort of wraps it up. That was our, our trip to Encore Records, my trip to Encore Records, meeting up with Brian and Joe, and uh, generally having a damn good day. Uh, and if you've stuck with this video this long, I appreciate you watching. Take care.